I am starting. Okay, so let us start. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, filling in the uh, questionnaire. Uh, felt very nice, especially someone's remark that they liked my enthusiasm about the topic. I don't really know how to react to this uh, because, you know, enthusiasm about uh, pornography is not what you put on your CV. But anyways, thanks. Um, yeah, and today... Uh, let me just move the things around a bit. Today we're talking about sex with the supernatural and supernatural in sex. Supernatural in sex is actually a topic that we already discussed many, many times because this is the whole connection to the immortals and to inner energies and such. So uh, we'll be concentrating more on sex with the other and just some of the notes that were not in the readings and uh, that would probably be interesting for you. So uh, why is it such a big thing? Why was it such a big thing? Uh, sex with supernatural is the other. Supernatural is something that is not us, not people. And it is something that is outside of society and outside of the norms that generally apply to humans. We've already seen that uh, something similar happens with the prostitutes that are also kind of outside of the society. So, for example, there was a belief that having too much sex is bad for a woman because she loses her energy and she cannot really serve the man with her energy properly, right? But there was a reverse belief about the prostitutes. And for them, there was a, uh, a saying, at least at some point, that it's actually good for them, that the more sex they have with different men, the more refined their yin energy becomes and the more energy they're able to store. So actually like going to a, like going to a prostitute is better, it's really good for both the prostitute and the man who's visiting her. And then that belief persisted for a while, at least uh, until the Chinese discovered the dangers of venereal diseases. Uh, so, as you see, somehow, if it's something outside of the society, the rules don't apply. And it was even more true when it came to sex and relationships with the immortals, with the ghosts, ghosts uh, with different uh, shape-shifting animals and objects, uh, with those tricksters. Because their status made everything possible. It was the ultimate fantasy. One night stands that were not really big in, um, in China, at least in Imperial China, were possible with the ghosts because no rules apply. Like the man doesn't have to do anything afterwards. Uh, different sexual experiments. Uh, all the things uh, you could only fantasize of doing without breaking the um, with societal norms. This is where all these supernatural beings uh, came into play. Uh, on the other hand, this thing, the other, is something uncontrollable. Once again, the rules don't apply. So it also was a really good medium to express the fears that are related to sex and sexuality. So uh, the male spirits can steal one's wives and nothing really can be done about it and no one's really to blame about it in many cases. Uh, there are works that you know, blame that someone's not virtuous enough and this is the retribution from the divine. But still, um, then the female spirits, the foxes, the, all, the openly sexual and lustful women that also reveal the lust in men and the lack of control in men without blaming any particular woman that is actually human. Uh, that is also one of the dangers of being openly sexual. And uh, it's interesting that there is actually a tradition in China that linked the famous concubines in China history that are known for uh, 
destroying the states and bringing chaos. They were uh, sometimes described as foxes. And I think one of those uh, descriptions was in the readings that you did for today, that it's not human, it's, it's, it's foxes who, who come to us and just destroy everything by being so sexy. So this is also kind of a way to push away all these fears and say that's not us, it's something else that's going on. Uh, so this is another important role of the uh, of the other of the supernatural when it comes to the erotica and to just a general discourse on sex in uh, uh, Chinese culture. Now, there are several groups of the supernatural that can be how do you say that can participate in sex with humans. First of all, it's immortals. Uh, this is the obvious, this we already discussed. First of all, a very common belief that to become an immortal, one has to have sex and follow proper techniques. So uh, there are several immortals uh, that attain this status just by having sex. Um, one of the most famous examples is the legendary emperor Huangdi, who is also very often um, someone who participates in the dialogue and gives instructions in the sex books. Then in uh, later dynasties, uh, there was the idea that one could prolong life to a large extent, but to become an immortal, one had to do some extra things on top of that. Uh, but still, sex was involved. So uh, just from the point of view of the common sex, Many people, both men and women, had sex with someone who was on the way of uh, becoming immortal or just past that stage. So it kind of was, it kind of was common knowledge that these things happen. Uh, when it comes to immortals, with time, the idea of virtue became more and more important and also for Taoism. So, um, sexual techniques uh, kind of declined and became less important or just uh, diminished for many schools in Taoism, uh, especially in those schools that adopted celibacy from Buddhism. So the sexual techniques kind of went into the way of uh, this, like in the sphere of uh, health and not way of gaining immortality. Uh, but this is elite monastic Taoism. Popular culture didn't take it. They didn't want it. So in popular culture, sex with immortals was still a thing. Uh, one of the very famous examples who's depicted in many different works, uh, both, uh, okay, poems not, but plays, uh, prose, uh, some other genres, uh, is one of the eight immortals, the Liu Dongbing, uh, the guy with the sword. He uh, originally was a saint in popular Taoism, so uh, he came from the masses. And he is known for having sex with everything that moves. So uh, there are quite a few uh, famous works on Liu Dongbing uh, having sex with women. There are also other works where he just gets drunk and uh, gets sick on someone's floor at home, but this is not important. Important thing that he seduced women. He was the immortal uh, who uh, takes part in this uh, depictions of sex. And uh, I think the most important work about him is uh, the legend of the uh, white peony, the Bai Mudan. Uh, this is a story, and there's also a play about it, uh, where uh, Liu Dongbing really likes uh, the girl. In some texts, she's a prostitute and some not. So he comes to her and seduces her and starts uh, visiting her regularly. Uh, but the problem is that he uses the uh, sexual techniques. He uh, doesn't just have random sex because he's immortal and he's smart not to lose any of the precious a uh, young energy. And because of that, she starts getting weak. He sucks her life out of her and she's starting getting sick. And in the end of the story, she learns from someone else 
how to trick Liu Dunbing and get all of her energy back. So she basically tricks him into ejaculating and uh, she gets better. That is probably one of the most famous example of uh, women having sex with male immortals. Uh, on the reverse side, men and uh, female immortals or goddesses. Uh, in my experience, like from what I know, from what I've seen, it's not so graphic. It's much more in the area of erotic. So probably one of the earliest and most famous story is the one about the cowherd and the weaver girl, where the cowherd uh, sees a few female immortals and steals clothes from one of them. And she promises to stay with him. So uh, it's the legend that is at the base of the CC festival in China, the Chinese Valentine's Day. So you probably heard of that. Uh, then once again, we talked about it when we talked about poetry is that the tradition of the depictions of goddesses and fe female immortals in uh, earlier poems really influence the erotic poetry about women in the later dynasties. And um, there always uh, was this topic, this subgenre of poetry where uh, men would write about meeting a uh, female immortal or meeting a goddess and writing about her beauty. So the erotic poetry about women and poetry about goddesses was closely connected. But as far as I know, it didn't really turn into pornography in later dynasties. So I didn't really see any graphic depictions of sex with uh, goddesses. Okay, then there are two more categories of the other. First is ghosts and uh, then uh, shape-shifting animals and other objects. Uh, for ghosts, I hope you noticed, I uh, added a separate article that you can look into. It's pretty short, I think it's just uh, 20 pages. So it's an easy read. But ghosts, as, as well as the second category. Originally, it was mostly just spooky stories about someone dying by not being careful or stories about one night stands, how, for example, someone travels and sees a nice house with a lonely woman in and he has a dinner and has sex with her and uh, wakes up on a grave, things like that. And uh, the most spooky part about this was just revealing that it was something else, something that is not human, that uh, entered the intercourse, had the intercourse with a man or a woman. Uh, ghosts and uh, the uh, shape-shifting spirits, let's call them like that, uh, are very close to each other in many respects, and uh, especially in the uh, earlier stories like Tang Dynasty. But then they diverted from each other in some respects. So um, as you probably also remember from the article for today, first of all, they had different social standing. Ghosts are generally connected to people somehow because it's a deceased person. So they're seen as someone of a higher social status than the foxes. And then, um, what else do I wanna say? I forgot, I forgot. Uh, yes, then ghosts are often um, depicted as something, someone more virtuous as foxes, someone who's more connected to social restraints, once again, because it once was someone who belonged to the society. But on the other hand, um, ghosts, as someone, like female ghosts especially, as someone who is connected by yin, is like an ideal of the yin essence. It's A, a woman, B, a ghost, a yin essence. So it's complete opposite of a alive man. 
So it's a nice contract. It's, um, um, how do you say, it creates a, a nice distance, a nice polarity between those who are connected to each other. Um, yes. On the other hand, there are those shape shifting spirits. Uh, will originally, originally, pretty much any animal or any object in the world can take a shape of a human. The idea was that if an object or an animal is old enough, it gets some magical properties. Through these magical properties, they can get more magical properties. So uh, they learn how to turn into people. And then by one of the ways, uh, by having sex with people, they get more uh, energy to learn to do more stuff, and then they can ultimately become immortals. Uh, and there are stories of, uh, I don't know, dogs pretending to be someone's absent husband, for example, or inanimate objects turning into a person and seducing someone. But the fox tradition was probably the most prolific one. And uh, especially in uh, later dynasties, something that happened after Tang and Sung dynasties is that foxes were, had the most attention of the riders. And also foxes are the most sexualized category of the other. So once again, there was like pornography with the immortals wasn't really a thing. Uh, the same goes, uh, okay, the same goes a bit less for ghosts, but still uh, there were some, like some more reservations about this because of the social status, because there was somehow connected to the society. There was someone sometime ago, a person, and also at some point, uh, there are stories of uh, people resurrecting because of their relationship to someone in the living world. And foxes are completely different. Foxes are something that allows for anything to happen. But uh, with foxes, you already know a lot because you read a large article about them. So I just suggest we talk a bit about them. How about that? <laughs> 